नाम शिवा ओम नाम शिवा ओम नाम शिवा ओम नाम शिवा नमस्ते So here we are continuing with the Mandukya Upanishad and its discussion of the nature of the creation which is a very important counterpoint the non-dual point of view on the creation which balances the other descriptions of the creation that we read for example in Shiva Purana to the other series that's going on concurrently so let's take a look at the next shloka natma bhavena nanedam nasenaapi kathang chana na pratang na pritak king chit iti tatva vido viduhu this manifold does not exist as identical with atman nor does it ever stand independent by itself it is neither separate from brahman nor is it non-separate this is the statement of the wise so what does it all mean <laughs> you see this is the problem with linear thinking this is the problem with binary logic either yes or no right or wrong true or false is that it does not and, and cannot account for this kind of transcendental understanding. Now, let's go back to the good old example of the rope and the snake. The rope is real, but due to ignorance, someone perceives it as a snake. Now, what is the relationship between the rope and the snake? Well, there isn't any, really. The rope has nothing to do with the snake. Why? Because the rope does not have the snake form embedded in it. It's not a part of the, of the rope. <laughs> the snake is completely different from the rope yet it is seen as identical you see it's illusion in other words it's maya that which does not really exist the snake has no existence it never came into existence it doesn't persist and it doesn't go out of existence because it never existed in the first place. And it can't exist, because the reality is it's a rope. <laughs> this is called the theory of superimposition, avyaya, avyaya vada. That when we see the world, we see something superimposed by our own mind and senses on the actual reality which is brahman and the proof of this well there are many proofs of it <laughs> but just take for example the world as seen by dogs dogs see differently they hear differently they smell differently they can hear things we can't hear they can smell things we can't smell. So the world perceived by a dog is completely different from the world as we perceive it. It's the same world. How is it that we perceive it differently from dogs? And what about bumblebees who can see in ultraviolet and sense magnetic fields? So their world is completely different their subjective perceived world. So this is the same thing as the rope and the snake. 
we see or we perceive the world as it is revealed to our mind and senses, depending on our conditioning, our karma. The better our karma is, the more closely our senses reveal the reality of the world. And the worse our karma is, the more it departs from reality. Consider, for example, someone who is drunk. <laughs> I encountered this drunk guy, and he's like on the verge of passing out. And he's going, I am a pure Brahmana. <laughs> You know, this is complete delusion, right? The world he sees, including his perception of his own self, is completely maya. It completely doesn't exist. You know, just because he's born in a certain family and he, he wears this string, <laughs> he considers that he is a pure Brahmin, even though he's, he's an alcoholic. <laughs> You see, and we're all like that. We all maintain a bunch of fictions about ourselves, about the world, about other people, etc., etc., about God. And chief among these fictions is that they exist. See, we like to bring up the invocation of the Ishopanishad. Om Purnamada Purnamidang Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vishishyate. This means Aum Brahman is the complete whole, Purnam, complete, full lacking nothing. And this world, Idun, is also complete, a complete whole, functioning independently, or at least apparently so. And then there's all the creatures, the beings in this world. They are also apparently complete wholes capable of independent functioning and existence. So how is it that although so many complete wholes emanate from the complete, the complete is not diminished in any way? How is it possible? Ordinarily we see that, for example, if you have a bucket full of water, and you take out a cup of water and you, another cup of water and so on, or even a, a drop of water at a time, pretty soon the pail is going to be like half empty. It's going to be diminished. So how is it that Aum, the Purnam, the complete, is not diminished by the creation? And of course, the answer is that the creation is maya. It doesn't really exist. That's what maya means. So it doesn't really exist because like the snake seen in the rope, the manifested world, the jagrat, uh, or jagat, the manifold, which seems to be uh, an abundance of independent whole beings manifesting, existing, and functioning independently. Actually, <laughs> it's simply an artifact of the body and the mind, our perceptual apparatus. And as we went over back in the uh, Drig Drishya Vivekaha series, it's uh, simply reflecting the actual consciousness, the unconditioned consciousness, the unlimited consciousness and being of Brahman. 
So we've been over this so many times. And it's, it's astounding to me that people still don't get it. And, and they make silly comments. Often I have to delete them because they just go completely off. Or they're just like trivial, like, thank you. Come on, say something intelligent. Something that shows thoughtfulness and understanding. That do you grasp the subject, you know, acknowledge at least the importance and the profundity of this subject. Let me know that there's intelligent life out there. Otherwise, I feel like, you know, uh, I'm just whistling in the wind. So, uh, you know, this really is the secret of the universe. This is really the essence of the existence. Is that the only thing that is real is consciousness. And not conditioned consciousness, like Jagrat, Svapna, and Sushupti, but pure consciousness, Turiya, that consciousness that never changes. See, ordinary conditioned consciousness changes. It can be aware of the outside world, that's Jagrat consciousness. It could be aware of the mental world of dreams, that's uh, Svapna consciousness. Or it could be aware of nothing, covered by ignorance, that's Sushupti. But the real consciousness is the unconditioned awareness that lies behind that. And underneath that, the unconditioned infinite being, existence of Brahman. So our mission here, our job in human life is to realize this Brahman. So what do we have to do to do that? Well, the first thing we need is knowledge. That's why we do these videos, to give you that knowledge. But then you have to put that knowledge into practice. It's not enough to simply have idle discussions about it. You have to inquire. Atma vichara, Ramana Maharshi says. Atma vichara. Vichara, of course, Atma means the self. Self with a capital S, the real self, not the illusion. The Aum, the Brahman, not the individual, not the ego, and not the mind. But then Vichara, what does Vichara mean? And <laughs> we met some silly people in Tiruvannamalai who were going around chanting, Atma Vichara, Atma Vichara, as a mantra. <laughs> and saying, this is continuous inquiry. No, that's not. It's, it's nonsense. Inquiry means to look into something, to investigate it, to understand it, to observe it, to think about it, to reason about it, to consult the source literatures, the Vedic literatures that describe it and understand what they're talking about. That's vichara. Because that leads to realization of Brahman. And realization of Brahman is not only the end of suffering, but it is the pure enlightenment that surpasses all other realizations. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.